Welcome back to Green Chat. We're going to take a closer look at an upcoming MMO, Pantheon Rise of Fallen. This week we have a special guest. Steve. The plant that sits on my patio. It's a little windy. Anyways, my name is Cleese, and let's get started. Hey everybody, hope you're having a good week. Welcome back to Green Chat, where you guys can ask me questions and I can give you my opinion to hopefully formulate your own on the upcoming MMO, Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. This week, we have a special edition. It's called Green Chat Rapid Fire. Uh, so basically, I've got questions that are like two weeks old, maybe even more. Hmm. And, uh, bam, well, bam, you know what I'm saying? Just like that, compressed, uncompressed, into in inter-explosion is what I'm going to do this time. So I'm going to try to get these questions out like, what, maybe two minutes a question? We'll see. We'll see, guys. Two minutes a question. Go. No, I'm kidding. Not really. Two minutes a question? The whole episode is me just pondering this. Just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. So let's do it. So first up, we have a question from Beards Homestead. Where do you stand when it comes to ding achievements in WoW? Personally, I don't think they have anything to do with a game like this, being Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, so I hope I don't have to see ding, congratulations to your first level 10, or ding, you you killed your first boar, or ding, you logged into the game. I put that part in there, that's not even funny. God, man. So what do I think about this? Man, what does anybody think about this? Probably everybody loves the ding for level only. And achievements, they're going to have them in the game. Who does not have achievements anymore? I don't like achievements because, uh, you know, your, your story is really told from the best position from yourself, from your face. Like, your story is better coming out of your face than me running up to you and going, no, 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 hi, whoa, hang, whoa, hold the door, bro. And then it's back. Then I'm like scrolling through menus and you're like, so about that group. I'm like, no, I, you know, just give me a minute, buddy. You know, and then, oh, 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 you, no, oh, I actually know you have this achievement here. We can be friends. So, uh, yeah, I'm not super new achievements, but on the other side of it, like, uh, if you wanted something to track your progress, like, uh, I don't know, you personally, what, I don't know what kind of stats you'd want to track, like how many times you've died, or how many times you've killed a certain raid boss, which would go back to what I was saying before. How about interpersonally? Like you can choose to express your achievements outwardly or choose to express them inwardly. And if people get, uh, you know, you know, choosy about, well, you don't, you don't express your achievements, then I'm just going to pretend like you don't have them. Uh, you know, maybe that would be like kind of harassment. Maybe not. I don't know. It seems like it. You're, you're stereotyping people. Like you're assuming this guy underperformed when potentially he's way cooler than you. He just doesn't like to go out and bloat about it. Bloat? Gloat? Man, I can already see tonight's going to be interesting. So, yeah, no, to save the dings for leveling, and I already know the ding is in the game. They already were like, well, let's do it on one of the live streams. They're like, ding, and they showed us the ding. Uh, you can go through their streams if you want to find it. It happens like once out of like the collective 20 hours of footage. Um, if you really want me to find it, I will. But uh, I'm sure you can Google that. Maybe not. We'll, we'll see. But yeah, so ding, not for achievements. I don't expect them to put for achievements. Uh, it's kind of a sacred noise that I believe is truly to only be associated with leveling your character to a new level. So we're already violating our two minute rule, so let's get back on track. Next up, we have a question from Eric Schrager. Have you ever seen EverQuest 1? Kronos has absolutely destroyed the game. Yes, I have seen uh, EverQuest 1, and I have seen what it done to it. Yes, sir. 90% uh, of the game revolves around these stupid things, and they are beep, beep, awful and ruin the game. Uh, I'd gladly, you know, not have these in the game, and, uh, you know, basically he's going on about how Kronos is terrible, and uh, don't put these in the game. So a question came up before, should they have some kind of alt currency token where you can, you know, buy them and then sell them for plat in the game or whatever? Basically, no, you shouldn't, uh, is what Eric's saying. And I don't see them putting in this game or putting this into the game anytime soon. When the game matures and get older, once the game is very robust and filled out, these can start making sense in the sense that you can start purchasing in-game time with in-game gold, but not necessarily buy 
these tokens with uh, money uh, externally. So at the same time, you can, you know, gold farmers are always a thing and then they can start making it easier to peddle their deal. But it is nice or rewarding. It's a really good way to keep a lot of people in the environment uh, that otherwise might not because they can't afford it or they don't want to put money towards it, stuff like that. It gives them the option to, through playing the game, if they're very successful, they can then pay for the game through playing for it, through playing for it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, don't put them in the game anytime soon, but definitely put it on the docket as something to be in the game. At least a token that you can purchase in the game or maybe a vendor you just give. That makes sense. Uh, a vendor you give money to don't have any personal transaction in it that would give you time in the game maybe i think that'd be cool all right next up we have a question from coach t uh it's not really a question it's a comment coach t is going on it's kind of long in this two minute thing i gotta compress basically coach t is saying hey why not make a city where it's like a gladiator city where a bunch of slaves get taken there or a bunch of misforgotten cretins that are the scum of the earth and they go to this city and they all hang out and then they spawn there and that's your starting city and that would alleviate the issue of you know a human and a ogre wanting to be bros you know out of the gates or bros and a lovely lady you know however you roll um you know however you roll so you know uh, initially definitely not going to have a gladiator city and then as the game grows Got a little door action there. As the game grows, excuse the door, I'm so sorry. But as the game grows, maybe this would be a good idea. Most games do go to this type of centralizing for character creation to streamline new characters through it so the game's not super complicated. But it sounds like Pantheon's really starting off in the sense where they're trying to control, not control, but have these starting areas be very uh, lore luscious and embracing and very, if you're into elves, and you pick an elf, you want to start off in a really cool elf place. You don't want to be starting at this gladiator city, potentially, or whatever the city might be. Who knows, a safe haven or something like that. Whatever. But uh, definitely a cool idea for down the road. And uh, thanks, Coach T, for the comment. All right, next up, we have a question from Aaron Miller. He's been pestering me. Just kidding, Aaron Miller. You have not been pestering me, sir. I am just kidding. This is also kind of a uh, Dakota Wright's jumping on this as well. Uh, so maybe you've answered this question before, but what race and class are you learning? Are you leaning towards for release? Also, are you going to have a guild and follow up? Can I be in your guild? So class I'm leaning towards. Initially, I was going to go for like a tank and something. I always play tanks. Uh, I do like what else do I like? I do like ranged physical range classes as well. That's real cliche, you know. I'm a tank and I'm a ranger, but. Uh, yeah, this time, I, you know, lately I've been trying to, in the games I've been playing, I've been playing Divinity 2, uh, Diablo 3, and EverQuest Project 1999. Uh, I think I'm gonna leaning towards a caster, and I kind of like the like the lore behind casters. Kind of like how they're very, like, um, typically casters are very, I feel like they're very cocky, or like uh, sarcastic, or they look down on people, like I'm so much better than and I just find it funny that they're always like they're always kind of betrayed as that. Not always, but it's kind of the feeling you get, especially when you're running through the lore. Actually, uh, playing a caster, you kind of get this feeling that you kind of feel like you're better than everybody else. Uh, I mean, you can cast really awesome spells, and a lot of your effort, you know, comes from a vendor that you get spells from, and your gear is kind of like eh, it's important, but it's not as important as like a, a rogue's daggers or something. So I'm definitely going to be playing a caster of some kind. Which caster, I don't know. Maybe an enchanter, enchant some people, or a wizard. You know, wizards, man. Wizards. Uh, also, you're going to go, so yeah, that's that's where I'm going with my class. Definitely a caster. Some kind of pure caster. Maybe even a cleric. I don't even know. I'm going to cast some spells, man. Pew. Uh, also, are you going to have a guild and follow up? Can I join your guild? So, you know what? I've been thinking about it, and uh, yeah, i got to talk to a few guys. Um, as far as this guild goes, uh, I mean, I've been running a guild since I had my kid. Uh, he's almost two now, so I really took a step back like a year and a half ago, a year ago, from doing anything guild-wise just because it got so overwhelming. I was just like, oh my gosh, eject. But uh, yeah, I've been involved in guild leading or guild leadership and guild guild bananas probably since 2009 to whatever. And that's really what I did before... I had a kid, I was like, I'm gonna run a guild, and that was like my part-time job, and uh, so yeah, I got a lot of bunch of, you know, I like guilds, you know what I'm saying, I like guilds, so yeah, I'm gonna make a guild, and you're welcome to join it, man. 
Just hit me up. You want to join my guild? You're in. Uh, anybody's welcome to join my guild. Everybody can join my guild. Uh, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, so yeah, that's the guild question. Aaron Miller, Dakota Wright, thank you. Let's move on. Next up, we have a question from Matthew Whalen. If there is a cash shop or cosmetic item store, I won't play it. I didn't really imagine you saying it like that, Matthew, but that's just, uh, you know, how I read this one because it's a cash shop, man. So, cash shops. Nope, they're not going to happen in the game. They're not going to have cosmetic cash shops. They're not going to have any type of cash shop. There will be no shop in the game, period. There might be something outside of the game, but it won't involve cosmetic items. Maybe it'll, uh, you know, involve like a plushie something like that you know maybe some merchandise they seem like they kind of want to lean away from merchandise because merchandise is a pain in the butt look at like really successful games and how they have to market their merchandise and eh, their stores are kind of they're terrible i mean they're great but it looks like it's so dysfunctional and like you're trying to find something and it's not there uh so yeah they're probably definitely gonna say hey never mind to that because their studio is so small but hey they might make a plushie we can have hope right so yeah no cash ops won't be in it They've already firmly stated no cash shops. So everybody, no cash shops. No. And if there's a cash shop, you can drive to my house and then pick me up. And then we'll drive over there together and be like, what? What are you talking about? There's no cash shops. You told me there was no cash shops. That's them telling me. So, yeah, you got it. You know what I'm saying? Boom. So next up, we have a comment from Dark Magic. Uh, Dark Magic saying, I do hope they have level sync so that lower levels are still challenging as a higher level character exploring it. So, Panther Rise of the Fallen super likely will not have level sync. Uh, very few games do have level sync, and when they do, I think there's, uh, it's what the, the tough part is, is if you have a level 10 guy in your group, and you have a level 20 guy, not in your group, let's say you just run through the world, killing the same mobs and have them being relative to those characters is kind of like a proprietary cool thing. Uh, so there won't be syncing, I mean, sync. So another way to look at that is like the way i guess in final fantasy does it is you can sync to an event to fight that event and still get xp and it lowers your level and you lose all your a ton of abilities and i think that would kind of lose the purpose of what you're going at here uh so wherever you go you'd always lower your level to that content i think what you mean by sync is you'd kind of the mobs would sync to your level so if you're running through a level 10 area you're level 50 the mobs would turn into level 50. I think that's where you're going with this versus you going down to level 10. And uh, that just won't be in the game. Another reason for that is uh, the power of your character. You get to explore that power of your character. You know, it's nice to, what's cool about it is these challenging areas you're talking about are very challenging. And what could happen is you could have a level 50 dungeon buried in a level 10 dungeon, like just buried at the bottom of it. And if that dungeon is synced to you, and now you can't just run through it and be a you know a BA and be like yo you know and get to the area you need to get to. Uh, so I really don't think that'll be in this game. And they kind of want uh, what they're going for is they'll have a level ten area, our level ten area, and a bunch of dudes will be in there like you know like you know taking their clubs, rubbing two sticks together to make fire. And you run through and there's like angel wings coming off you and your capes like blowing in the wind even though you're in a cave. And you're like wow's that happening? Uh, you know, and they're like, whoa, and that really inspires people to really, you know, want to be you, basically. And uh, it keeps you encouraged as to what you can look forward to when you level up. So when you're going through the grind, you're like, oh, look, man, that, I wonder where that guy's going. And you send him a whip, oh, I'm going down to the deepest, darkest part of this dungeon, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, man, I can't wait to go down there. What level is that? And they're like 50, and you're like, whoa. And it kind of gives a sense of wonder and amazement. Anyways, going on. That's, uh, I don't think there'll be level sync. I wouldn't expect level sync. All right, next up, we have a question from Beards Homestead. At release, we all hope for many people playing and staying. My question is, when it comes to dungeons, man, what? well, great sentence structure here. It is said to be open. Excuse me. Let me, after I just in interrupted myself. My question is, when it comes to dungeons, it is said to be open, but the risk with that is it will be overcrowded at release and a few weeks in. Where do you stand when it comes to zoning the dungeons with grouping, let's say, of 10 groups to 11 groups, uh, 11 to 21 groups, zoning into, et cetera, et cetera, basically zone one, zone two, zone three, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, like the dungeons will still feel open and fun, but only zones if necessary. So I don't like this because I like the fact that a dungeon can get packed out. 
it forces you to deal with that situation where you know you go to a bar and it's packed and you're like oh man i have to go to this other bar and then you go to the other bar and then that one's packed and you go to a different bar not to say these bars are all you know whatever we're talking dungeons now but it gives you a reason to explore the world and find things that you otherwise wouldn't find and these worlds like brad mcquade and chris perkins and the team have said vr that these worlds will be a massive so you i mean their environments are ginormous like think grand scale they're huge so you having a hard time to find a place to group is going to be interesting problem it will be a problem but continually like you know you seeking this area that area this area um will be an issue now i understand what you're saying when the game launches yes there will be a gajillion people compressed into one area and that's just the issues of MMOs. They can't design around a release, basically. There's no way to do it. It just makes no financial sense. It makes no game planning. I mean, game planning, yeah. But it makes no sense to design your game in any sense around a release. Basically, the first week is just going to be a complete like, oh my god, you're going to try logging in, you're going to get queue times. You're going to try logging in, and you're going to be standing still for five hours you're going to try logging in, you know, blah, 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 blah. Granted, um, who is uh, Unity will be hosting these servers or be hosting their, basically their network infrastructure. So that will probably alleviate a lot of the issues because they'll be able to, you know, you probably won't be standing around just, you know, the frozen thing, DDoSing and that whole banana cake thing probably won't be an issue. But finding a, a group, uh, finding a place to hunt is part of meeting people you know and if it starts dividing us that early the whole point is for it to smash us together and see what comes out of it basically that's kind of the point of this game it's the point of uh, a persistent world where there is no zoning period so there won't be any zoning i like that there's no zoning i wouldn't mind going to a dungeon and seeing 20 other people sit around and be like whoa hey guys what's up and then well i'll just start chatting whatever at least in the first week of the release i mean i'm where nobody's trying to get anywhere fast. Anyway, there comes a train. There comes a train. So yeah, nobody's trying to get anywhere fast. It's more of a marathon, not a sprint. So I'm gonna cut out here because this train is loud. It's gonna be loud for like two minutes. But I think I've qualified this question as answered. So let's move on. All right, next up we have a question from Martin uh, Winther. Actually, it's not a question, it's a comment. Mark my words, this game will be dead. Use a different word, but I'm not gonna use it. Um, it's going to be dead when it hits the pavement, pretty much. Too much, let's make a new EQ game, and too little progressive thoughts. So, this is my turncoat at that statement. Uh, granted, Martin was like, hey, thanks for the content anyways. I don't think he, I think he wants this game to succeed. However, he's concerned that this game will just be EQ reskinned. Now, my rebut to that would be kind of a to think about question is I think Dungeons and Dra or excuse me, I think Dungeons and Dragons, you know, tabletop is better than World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy, whatever MMO I can play right now, I would prefer to play the tabletop if I could. If I had the community of real life friends that really can get that done. I have in the past. I've played Pathfinder as well. That was also really enjoyable. Uh, I prefer that to the current MMOs are right now. And that is you know, basically it's not progressive at all. It's it's backwards. They keep trying to make a new thing. People keep trying to make new MMOs. They keep trying to make this like magical time where they're like, look at these new features and all these grand things. And I think all we really want is just pretty much a reskin EQ. I mean, no offense, if they reskin EQ uh, and took out all the Ragamaru after uh, what Valius uh, or you know, uh, yeah, after that, and kind of kept with the the nature of where the game was going and then re kind of reconstructed a little bit. I think that game would be freaking awesome right now, man. Uh, so that's, I think a lot of that's what Brad McQuaid sees or that's what he feels that there's out there. That's the pulse of this group. And that's, he doesn't need much. He really doesn't need, if you do the math, and that's what he's kind of banking on because uh, he's got to be banking on something that makes sense. He can't, he's got to... He sold this to people, and whoever is buying into it has clearly bought into it. And this is not just the VIPs. This is whoever is investing 
besides the VIPs, besides the Kickstarter people, all that, there's there's other other investments going on. I mean, there, there has to be for the level of product they're putting out so far. The last stream is a pretty pretty looks pretty good. Um, basically, basically, I'm just going on and on here. Holy cow! <clears throat> basically, he doesn't need a whole lot, even if this game is what you would expect, uh, Martin. Uh, or many of you other viewers might expect is that this game is going to be a reskinny queue. There is so many people out there that are looking for reskinny queue. It makes sense. I don't think they're making a reskinny queue. There's a lot of principles in this game that are carried over from EQ because that's what Brad McQuaid likes and that's what a lot of us other fans like. I mean, gosh, I could go on. I. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm breaking my two minute rule. But I think you know what I'm saying. He really just needs to get like. Well, shoot probably even 35,000 of us on board maybe 40 if he gets that many customers the game will move forward this isn't like a triple a large launch game with a crazy backing of like this cost uh, crazy amounts of money to make this is a financially sensible well thought out plant uh, many years in the banking coming through to fruition shortly in time and uh, that's it Man, I'm getting defensive over here. I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna relax, I'm stopping the defensive. Martin, I respect the comment, thank you. Um, but I disagree, uh, but I agree that you should have your opinion and let's hope it's not, uh, you know, dead when it hits the street, you know what I'm saying? Let's move on. This this is way longer than two minutes, I'm sorry. I think I, well, you know what? I think I got a little personal with this one. Yeah, I'm supposed to be very like, you know, I'm on the outside of the bubble. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I'll go do a little, like, meditation or something to get back on track. You know what I'm saying? All right, so uh, next up we have Chris uh, Gaylor. Uh, Chris Gaylor is asking, are they going to allow people to train or bother others without recourse is what I'm wondering. So I mentioned this in the past video. Uh, his question also, there was a different video where he, he mentioned about a feign death and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. They're going to, the CS team will get involved anytime there is uh, harassment against other players, especially with Fain Death, or the mechanics like training, like suiciding yourself into groups to kill those groups, or to blow out camps to get certain name mobs that just pop, like intentionally weaponing group, taking their name mob, etc. Now, just like with police, uh, when somebody wipes in or somebody comes in and destroys your group, and you call the cops and they get to you 30 minutes later two hours later the next day whatever there could be a large ticket volume who knows who knows what's going on uh expect that be ready for that mentally that's the thing you need to be ready for and that's just it so the the biggest policer of this will be the community they need these abilities in the game they make the game better and they will also root out which monks you never want to group with uh, because if you are grouping with, let's say, for example, let's say me, I'm a terrible monk man. Let's say I'm going around terrorizing the town over here, and then I'm like, <laughs> all right, you know, job done, complete. I just got my uh, thrills for the week. I'm going to go over here and group and get some experience, get some awesome loot, because I'm so good at this game, and that's all I do is play this game all the time, because um, that's what I do, you know what I'm saying? And then you're like, oh, hey, man, you join our group, boom, boom, boom. And then this guy over here whispers you like, oh, man, you're grouping with that monk, dude? And you're like, yeah. Why? Dude, he just wiped out all these people. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. Uh, and then, you know, uh, see how I'm going with that. So, yeah, I mean, they're going to be able to react to these things and pff, there'll be recourse, but I really doubt they will go through and repair all the damage that's done. There's no true way to compensate for the level of damage that some people can do, especially wiping rates and stuff like that. It can get way too complicated. So I think death will be a thing in the game. Maybe they'll give you back your res experience. They'll put the tool in the game to really make it easier, like ting, ting, ting. But then they got to prove that it happened. You know, there's all these things. Uh, so it'll take some, you know, effort on their end. And I really think they'll persecute people that are abusing other players. But restitution for their acts, eh, that gets really gray. I mean, if you've ever been in a raiding guild on any type of, you know, any situation really where you're kind of like doing cutting edge stuff and something drops and whatever you know uh you know you're, you're getting like world first or something not world first but like server first world first is crazy crazy unless it's your job um yeah so that in a nutshell is what i would say now what i like i mentioned before what i would mention or what i would recommend doing 
is make a crazy character's name during alpha, pre-alpha, or pre-alpha, alpha, and beta, and train people and see what the team does. And, uh, you know, tell somebody else so they kind of know you're, you know, an insider, you're a mole tester. Uh, but you could say that when they, you know, when they, when they contact you, what are you doing? Be like, I'm testing to see what you would do. You know, uh, it took you five hours to respond to this. And they'll be like, oh, good point. Probably. That's what I would be like if I was one of them. Let's move on. Holy cow. This is supposed to be two minutes per question. I suck. I suck at time management. You know, seriously. All right. Real quick comment. Uh, Blackmore is asking, you mentioned two copies of the game. If you pledge, is that something we can still do? Or is that Kickstarter no longer available? Yes. If you go to the website, pantheammo.com, go to their pledge, top right somewhere. There's a pledge button. Uh, if you do pledge, some of the pledge carry two copies of the game. I think the first pledge just carries form access or something. Uh, but the following pledges give you two copies of the game still. So pledge away, young young Skywalker. Uh, next up, we have a comment from Undertaker. What I wouldn't like to see in the first expansion is Obsolution. EQ's first two expansions, well, you know what? This is just a bunch of stuff of an example. Basically, game drops. Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, expansion comes out, all of it, all the other stuff is obsolete. 100% uh, will not be the case, at least with Pantheon, with the way the game's designed, because it's just the way the game's designed. They'll probably add on a little bit to the world, but it's not going to be like uh, what games have kind of turned into lately is they've been making all new worlds for you to kind of deal with, and you kind of go from area to area to area, and you really just kind of leave past content completely behind, where in Pantheon, I think they'll just add on little chunks, because the world is already so ginormous, it would completely make no sense to re-ginormate, re-ginormate, re, re, re it, uh, make another one, but rather change the conditions in the world, uh, which potentially means that if you join the game five years down the road, uh, you know, a starting city might not look the same. But granted, that's just how games are in general with graphics and updates and building out the world and, you know, fleshing things out. A new technology comes out where they can do something and they do it, you know, so yeah. That's just one thing you gotta kinda, that's the give or take with these type of models. So this one will probably just have small additions on and the old content will completely stay relevant probably through the life of the game. Most likely. I mean, you've gotta get pretty far down the road for that to stop happening. And then they can come up with different technologies and stuff like that to make it relevant or maybe some way rehash the material with, uh, I mean, they got the, proge uh, the progeny, uh, system and that would be one way but if you wanted to use your main character somehow you know whatever we'll see but uh yeah don't expect the old expansions to become irrelevant maybe a story wise but not eh, you know maybe still play it through the story and the epic quests for the uh for the epic expels and stuff like that but yeah let's move on so next up we have a question from ak907 silvers uh kind of a two-parter the second parter is pretty interesting still working on it first parter is also interesting and something of note. So his question is, will rare items randomly drop off uh, random mobs out in the world or will all loot be off names and from quests? So basically uh, what you would expect is there'll be common drops or rare drops or legend, whatever. I don't know how they're gonna work their rarity system, but there'll be specific items that exclusively drop off uh, name mobs, which you're very used to. And then there'll be a set of gear or a set of items that drop off of plane mobs so you won't be seeing like if there's king jacob oh my name is king jacob and he has a very nice pendant you know what i'm saying uh you know you won't be seeing king jacob's pendant of truth and honor and beauty dropping off of some you know rat in the corner not likely uh but yes so but the rat might drop a long sword or a shield of the righteous uh, if those are items in the game i have no idea but you know you might see stuff like that uh just kidding you won't see that now i totally remember i'm trying to make jokes here and it's not working out great so what they said to expect is you should expect items to drop off creatures that make sense for that creature to drop it so you shouldn't see like a chess piece that's adorned in full furs with tiger claws coming out of the shoulders dropping off rats you should see rat tails bones uh stuff like that now if the rat's big and potentially he ate a man that was wearing the 
you know, armor, then you can see that on that rat. But they said expect drops to make sense of what they drop off of. Yeah. So take that at face value, whatever you want. And then Nabobs obviously drop their special loot tables and rarity on that stuff like that. So boom. So next up, uh, AK907 is also asking, basically, it's kind of a long, lengthy statement, but uh, what the question is, is uh, an EverQuest game started off with like two decks, one stir, three save cold on a really good item. And then way later down the road, like 28 expansions later, 18 expansions later, whatever, you know, it would have like 10,000 HP on it, 500 decks, not 500, you know, would say like 480 decks. I'm blowing these numbers way out of proportion. Like 100 save cold, 100 save fire, poison, disease, magic, whatever, you know, just crazy stats coming out of their face. So this is the monster of MMOs. If they carry on long enough, uh, they will have this issue. So if you guys have any idea about this or if they've even talked about this, go ahead and post in the comments below because I've been looking for it. Uh, I'm trying to somehow engage them. In this type of question, it's difficult to really, you know, ask. But basically, do they have in mind what they plan to do about number bloat inflation? So basically, like a level 50 casts a heal, that heal completely heals a tank, and then you gain 10 levels, and then a level, you know, 60 casts a heal with the same potency, probably even quadrupled from level 50, and it only heals the tank 50% of the way up, you know, half his life, and that just gets worse and worse the worse the higher you go the bigger your numbers get the bigger your health pools get the smaller your spells will start affecting things like your heals will do way more but they'll look like they do way less you know stuff like that health bars start moving really slowly there's not a lot of danger you're sitting there spamming heals all the time your mana pools are ginormous anyway uh, that's what happens when the game's been out for a really long time and a lot of the times you need to nip this with the creation of the game. Have a plan in place when you're creating these values and these numbers and these equations to calculate damage, healing, and stuff like that. Do you have a way of dealing with that way down the road when your numbers get humongous and out of control? That's the question. If you guys know anything about that, post in the comments. Thank you. And then I'm also, well, you know, I, I, you know, honestly, I've been so busy this week. I've been really busy this week. I've had this week off. And, you know, having a week off when you have a two-year-old is, like, it's not even like having the week off. It's like actually working more than going to work. It's, it's crazy. So uh, I intend to make some posts in the forums about this and send some private messages, at least to figure out, because I think it's a great question. Uh, I know some of you guys are like, well, whatever, you know, let's, let's do it. So, you know, I think it's really important that we bring this up and see if they're even thinking about it. They're super likely thinking about it, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe you guys already know. Maybe they already posted about this. I just don't know. You know, I'm human too. Or am I? All right, and the last comment up is from Prescott Stoops. Uh, animal affinity, to me, sounds like an ability that keeps animal types, NPCs, from aggroing you. Also, any word on tracking ability? So I looked more on animal affinity. I kind of responded to Prescott. But basically, it basically means you're taking the shape of an animal when you have animal affinity. Affinity is you resemble an animal in some way so i think rangers i think this is really cool like let's do an example here if they get like wolf's charge and they cast that ability or spell they might actually turn into a wolf and then charge and then turn back on themselves which sounds wicked sick and then they might get like uh like tiger lash you know and they're like Rawr! they'll turn into a tiger who knows but that's would be really Freaking cool, man. And they have a boat too. Man, that's... Oh, everybody's going to want to be a ranger. It's happening again. It's happening again. Uh, yeah, it's happening again. How many rangers are going to be? Tons. Tons of rangers happening again. Also, tracking ability. I would expect them to have tracking. Uh, they kind of threw it out there like, hey, if it was an EverQuest, expect it in Pantheon. We're just building on that to a very great degree. And we're also kind of tweaking how everything functions. But tracking sounds like a very pivotal function of a ranger i mean also a druid too yeah i mean that's what they're out in the wilds doing cool stuff they can find traps that are camouflaged and, you know that's what rangers do tracking yes definitely especially with how vast they've been talking the worlds are gonna are gonna be tracking makes so much sense to find certain npcs and stuff like that for quests that wander and they have random swamp points expect tracking that has got to be tracking they'd be they'd be crazy if there's no tracking people be like what no track yeah there'd be an outrage 
especially with how many ranges it's going to be with animal affinity. <laughs> you know, come on, they'll be tracking. So, track away, track it up. Track star, star track, a track, tracking. Okay, I'm going to stop tracking. Track this. I'm done with this question. All right, guys. Holy cow. Totally didn't remotely stick to my two minutes per question. I'm sorry. But I really wanted to catch up on everybody's questions because there's some things I wanted to jump into for future videos. And it only felt correct to answer any questions that I might have missed. And you know what? If I missed other questions because I've made so many spreadsheets and Word docs and whatever, if I haven't answered your question or you do have another question, please leave it in the comments below again and be like, yo, this is the, you know, like f do the thing where you do at your work where you like forward your previous email and you're like, updates? Question mark? You know, do whatever you want. Or you can be like, you know, very kind and be like, just ask me the question straight out, whatever. Um, and again, I'm trying to get more on track with these questions, give you more of like what the developers have said. More and more, they're putting more information out there and I'm trying to make these questions and answers much less of my opinion because they're starting to put a lot more content out there uh, for it to become less of that because that's the, really the goal. The Really the goal is for me to give you the answers and take the word opinion out of green chat altogether. But as it stands, it remains. So if you guys like what you saw, consider liking and subscribing to get any notifications for any future content that I release. Again, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you again really soon. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to say. Steve wanted to wish you all a happy week and say goodbye. That's, this is how Steve says goodbye. He just looks at you. So enjoy, guys.